Here's a teardown of the Relife RL304S USB multi-charger. I bought it for 59 US dollars from Northridge Fix and the, this charger is also available for between 30 to 40 US dollars from AliExpress. The charger comes in this box and inside we find the charging unit and a power cable. So here's the main unit and uh, here we have the power cable. And this is a US plug and uh, this is the non-polar IEC C7 connector. On the back side they actually write that it's um, it should have been the EU plug. They have a Chinese type and the UK type. But um, yeah, they supplied uh, the US plug instead. Uh, two small pieces of paper. One is a small user manual, but it's actually just the, the specification sheet of the capabilities of the charger itself. And uh, here we have a small certificate where we can see that the device was produced in 2023. The charger itself, it looks quite nice, but it still has this a bit cheap look and feel to it. Here on the top, we have a 15 watt Qi wireless uh, charger. So it supports both iPhones and Android phones. Here in the front, there are two power delivery ports, one supporting 45 watts and the other one 20 watts. Down here we have two QC 3.0 USB charging ports. These ports will actually negotiate the voltage and current requirements with your target in order to decrease the charging time. The four remaining ports here are standard USB charging ports delivering up, delivering up to 2.4 amps at 5 volt each. The display that will show you the state of the charger and uh, let's try to charge a few devices. So I powered up the charging station and uh, let's try and uh, do some wireless charging here. So it's charging with the 5 watts at the moment. And then it increases the charging power. 10 watts and if we remove it, it stops, go back again and it starts again. That's quite nice. Let's try some of the standard ports here. Just attach a power cable to the mobile phone and let's start with the USB 3. And uh, here you see that it starts charging with a higher voltage, uh, 9 volts and uh, 2 amps. And then we can try one of the standard 5 volt ports here. And then we see that it's charging with a 5 volt 1.6 amps. And uh, you can see here the Port number three is lit up and this is port number three. So let's try 3.0 again. And this is port number six. And over here you see that it lights up the number six here and nine volts again. Let's have a look inside and see how they made this. So I managed to get inside the enclosure. That was quite easy. It is just glued together. So it was fairly easy to pry apart. Inside the enclosure here you see we have five posts and uh, this will hold the front panel PCB in place using these only four screws now. 
So one disappeared, typical, right? And uh, then we have the mains power PCB here. All leaded parts on the top and SMD parts here on the back side. And over here we have the front panel PCB and um, here we have the wireless charging unit. It consists of this control PCB here and uh, the inductor here. And this is just soldered together. This is a quite cheap way of doing everything. And uh, this wireless unit is attached to the top with two screws. And they are just hidden here under this rubber. So it's quite easy to disassemble. Let's have a look here on the power PCB. So they use a lot of technical glue all over the place to hold the parts in place. Over here we have the mains power input. And here we have an NCC resistor that will reduce the inrush current. Here we have a on the sill screen it says a 6.3 amp fuse, but it's actually a 3.15 amp fuse. And uh, the 3.15 amp is a typical value for these 100 watt power supplies. An X capacitor, and then we have two rectified bridges here, and the main smoothing capacitors. They are actually a weak point in these cheap chargers. These are often uh, branded with some strange names. So this is from the company Shunz. Never heard about that before. So the power goes into this transformer here that will transform the power from the primary side to the secondary side. And here on the secondary side, we have some inductors and capacitors for smoothing out the DC voltages. And uh, they are transferred uh, via this 15 pin connector here. So you see the heat sinks here. This one is just screwed on here and the rest of it is just glued. There's no other fixing points for it. And this heat sink here is just screwed here on this part and it's soldered in one place only here. And the rest of it is just glued. It's a very cheap, cheap way of doing things, I think. Let's have a look on the back side. So here the power comes in, goes through the rectifier bridges, the smoothing capacitors, and it goes into this AC to DC converter. So this is uh, the type, uh, that's the type OB2269. And uh, that's a knockoff of the CB2269 CP from, from Lydon. And uh, this is a typical offline flyback converter configuration we see here. And uh, here we have the feedback coming from the secondary side to the primary side. And here we have the DC voltages and they are fed into these six identical circuits here. So these six are DC to DC converters of the type CX8855. And uh, you can find links to the data sheets in the description down below. One of the critical points here is that you see the Isolation distances, so this is actually acceptable in this design here. So this is the uh, primary side and this is the secondary side that should be safe to touch. And of course, when dealing with this, remember to 
discharge the main capacitors before you touch anything because you have live voltage here on these capacitors. All right. Here on the other PCB, we have the USB charging ports and uh, an LED display. And I tried to look up the part number. I couldn't really find anything on this. Let's see if we can focus on here. There's nothing, it's, it's a custom job. But I think it's actually possible to to remove some of the um, this front panel here. Let's see if it's possible to take this apart. Yeah. So you can see that just some LEDs inside here and then a front cover. Then it's easier to write some other text if you want. Then you just need to make a new front cover. And uh, here on the back side, we have a lot of control logic. Let's start over here. Um, that is the main CPU here. And it's a, just a, you cannot find any information here. It's a custom part. And uh, the part number is actually the same as you see here on the PCB. Let me turn it around. Let's focus here. So this is the main controller and the, the pins for the display. And uh, this is a, LED display driver here, a 3.3 volt regulator. And here we have an analog switch. And up here we have the circuitry for powering the power delivering ports. This is the controller called XPD738, charge controller. And some of the other chips, they are also very strange branded. I couldn't identify them. But okay, the quality looks okay. Yeah, and then the, we have an analog switch here. That's a four to one, two channel general purpose uh, multiplexer. That will take some of the analog voltages coming here and then, then you can switch them into a, a AD converter here inside the MCU. Yeah, and there's not a lot of stuff to tell around this. This is just the inductor, 15 watt wireless charger. And I don't want to disassemble this because everything is just glued down here. That's it. I hope you liked the video and uh, please considering subscribing and supporting my channel. Thank you.